Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives, so specifically today we're going to be talking about graphing functions using the first derivative and the second derivative. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So question of the day, how can we graph a function when we only know its behavior? So we're going to go ahead and go through an example here together. We're going to graph f using the given information. So first we have that f is continuous on the open interval, negative infinity to infinity. So I know there's not going to be anything funky happening in between. It's just going to be a continuous nice function. Now let's go ahead and look at all of these pieces of information we're given. We're given pieces of information on the first derivative along with the second derivative. And we're also given the interval that this takes place on. So I have something whipped out here. We have a sign chart. And that's always our first step. So let's go ahead and look at our first interval. That's going to be from negative infinity to zero. Let's go ahead and talk about the first derivative in this first line. And in the second one, we'll talk about the second derivative. So what I'm going to do is talk about what the function is doing. So first we have that f prime x is less than zero. So the first derivative is negative, which means our function is decreasing. So that's how I would draw it out. We also have that the second derivative is greater than zero. So the second derivative is positive. That means it's going to be concave up. So here we have a function that is concave up and it's decreasing. So it's going to first start off doing something like that. So now we're just going to go through all of these different intervals. So from zero to one, the first derivative is positive, meaning it's increasing. And the second derivative is greater than zero, which means it is concave up. From one to two, we have the first derivative is greater than zero, so it's increasing. And the second derivative is less than zero, so it's concave down. From two to three, we have that the first derivative is less than zero, so we go back to decreasing. And the second derivative is also less than zero, so it's concave down. From three to four, we have that f prime x is less than zero, so it is decreasing. And the second derivative is positive, and so it is concave up. Finally, we have from four to infinity, the first derivative is greater than zero, so it is increasing, and the second derivative is greater than zero, so it's concave up. So now we have a nice little sign chart. Another way that we could do this sign chart is kind of what I started doing over here in the pink. We can kind of connect the pieces. So on our first interval, we have something that is decreasing and concave up, but on the second interval, it's concave up and increasing, and so it would connect something like that. On the third interval, we have that it's concave down, but still increasing. And so we would switch over to concave down, but we're still increasing. And then from two to three, it's decreasing and concave down. So again, it would connect. From three to four, it's decreasing and concave up. So we would again switch to something like that. And then finally, we're increasing and concave up. So that's another way if you wanted to graph it out in a way that visually makes sense to you, you can do it either of these ways. You can do it with the table or you can do it how I did it in the pink. So let's go ahead and apply that now to an actual graph. I have all of the x values mapped out. So I have x equals zero. And this is where we apply the sign chart. So remember, we don't know what the function is. And so we get to use a little bit of creativity here. So we have from negative infinity to zero, we're going to be decreasing and concave up. And so we're going to do something like this. And now from zero to one, we're increasing concave up. So we switch over and then we switch over to concave down and increasing. So something like that. Again, we're concave down and decreasing. We switch over to concave up and decreasing. And then finally we end going up and concave up. So this is how I would graph it out. We do, again, like it's not a perfect drawing, right? But I do have the increasing and decreasing and I do have the concavity. And so that's how we get to use our creativity to kind of fill in the dots here. So let's go ahead and now see what happens when we have our actual function and we wanna to try to graph it using these different properties. So I have kind of a list written out of what we should do. First, let's go ahead and talk about the domain of the function. When we talk about the domain, we wanna pay attention to illegal values. So if we look at our function here, we can tell that there's gonna be no illegal values, which means they'll be continuous. So the domain is gonna be from negative infinity all the way to infinity. We can include all values. So now our next step is to talk about the derivative. So here we want to find critical points, intervals of increasing and decreasing. So we're going to apply the first derivative test. So here we want to find f prime x. 
And this is equal to, I'm going to bring down that 3, 3x squared divided by 3 minus 400. And of course, we can simplify that because those 3s divide out and we get x squared minus 400. Our next step is to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So if I add over that 400, I get x squared equals 400. Taking the square root of both sides, I get x equals two values, which is positive and negative 20. And so here we have our critical values. So now let's go ahead and fill in our chart. So let's take some test values. Let's go ahead and take negative 21. Let's take zero and positive 21. So we want to plug these into our derivative. If it's positive or negative, that tells us if our function is decreasing or increasing. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So if you get to this point on an exam or homework and you're not allowed to use a calculator, it's really great to just sit and think about it. All we care about is if this is positive or negative. So think about it. I know that 20 negative 20 squared minus 400 equals zero. Now, if I take a number that's a bit bigger than negative 20, so negative 21 squared minus 400, well, I know negative 21 squared is going to be bigger than 400, and so that's going to result in a positive value. So here I can plug this in that this will be positive, and it's going to be the same with positive 21, because all we're doing is squaring it, and a negative number squared is positive, positive number squared is positive. So that means it's going to be positive on both sides. When it's positive on both sides, that means it's going to be increasing. Now we need to go ahead and plug in zero. So this one, this is where we get our negative value, right? And so we get negative, our function is decreasing. So now we have our first number line. Let's go ahead and find our second number line. So now we want to go ahead and find the second derivative. I'll write what our first derivative was. So here our second derivative is going to be equal to 2x. So we set that equal to zero and we solve for our x value. So dividing both sides by two, we get x is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and set up our number line. So let's go ahead and choose values to plug in. We can plug in negative one and positive one just on either side. And remember, we're plugging this into our second derivative. So f double prime of negative one. Alrighty, so here when I plug in negative one, I got a negative value, which tells me my function will be concave down. And then on the other side of zero, when I plugged in one, I got a positive value, which tells me my function will then be concave up. So what we're going to do with these two charts is we're gonna combine it into a sign chart. So first, what we need to do is fill in all the critical values and the inflection points. So if I look at those, I had negative 20 and 20, and I also had a value of zero. So if I fill that in numerically, I have negative 20, zero, and 20. So let's go ahead and talk about our first derivative, f prime of x. We have from negative infinity to negative 20, we have that our function is increasing. Now between negative 20 to positive 20, we're going to be decreasing, which means I'll be decreasing on both of these. And then from 20 to infinity, our function goes back to increasing. Now with concavity, we have on the left side of zero, our function is going to be concave down. So I'll fill both of these in as concave down. On the other side of zero, we have that it's going to be concave up. And so I'll fill both of these in for concave up. So if you like what we did last time for that second part where we kind of connect the dots, what we can do is show that we have a function that's increasing but concave down. And now we're decreasing and concave down as well. We switch over to decreasing and concave up. And then finally, we're increasing and we're concave up. So our function is going to look something like this when we plug it in. Since we're given the actual function, we can take a couple extra steps. So of course, we can check for any vertical and horizontal asymptotes. In this case, since we're just working with a polynomial, we do not have any. So we don't need to worry about those. But always make sure to check for like illegal values, for the end behavior, stuff like that. Now we're also gonna find any x and y intercepts. So let's go ahead and first find the y intercept. So I'll set x equal to zero. And here we get a value of zero. And so first we're gonna have a point at zero comma zero. Now let's go ahead and find the x intercept. So I'm gonna set y equal to zero. What we can do is factor an x out. 
And now we can set both terms equal to zero. So here we get a value of x equals zero, which corresponds with our y-intercept. And now let's go ahead and set this one equal to zero. Alrighty, so here I get x-intercepts at negative 20 times the root three comma zero and positive 20 root three times zero. So let's go ahead and graph it. Our first step is to plot these intercepts. So of course we have the y-intercept at zero, zero, and then we have our other two x-intercepts. And so one of them is gonna be at negative 20 root three. I don't know what that value actually equals, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in and say, sure, let's pretend that's negative 20 root three. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, we're just estimating, so we don't have to be perfectly precise. So now what we can do is just plot what we already did down here. We basically already have what the graph is gonna do. We have the end behavior. It's gonna start by increasing and concave down. We're gonna cross over and then we're gonna cross over one more time. And that is our function. And again, it's just an estimate, right? We're just using our skills to try to graph it to our best ability. And so I would say that's pretty dang beautiful. And so let's compare this to the actual graph. I have it right here. And we can tell that that is pretty dang similar. And that's not perfect, but again, we're just using a pretty good estimate. So now let's go ahead and try to go through one of these on our own. We have f of x equals x times e to the x squared. So remember, our first step is to find the domain. So think, are there any values that we cannot plug in? And that's not gonna be true. So we can plug in all x values, so our domain is gonna be from negative infinity to infinity. So we don't need to worry about any discontinuities, right? So let's go ahead and find our first derivative. When we're finding our first derivative, we are gonna to have to use product rule. So first, our first term is gonna be x, and then second, we're gonna have e to the x squared. So the derivative of x is just gonna be one, and the derivative of g is gonna be two x e to the x squared. If we forget how to find the derivative of e terms, what we do is, I do the triangle method, and first we drop it down. So e to the x squared, nothing changes, but we multiply it by the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of x squared is just gonna be two x. So that's how we get the derivative. Now we're gonna go ahead and use these, so we just gotta cross multiply and add those together. Alrighty, let's go ahead and try to simplify this a little bit. I can pull out an e to the x squared and I get one plus two x squared. And so now what we wanna do is find our critical values, right? So if we set this equal to zero, this is gonna give us two terms. We have e to the x squared equals zero and we have one plus two x squared equals zero. Try and solve it out if you can, pause the video. What we're gonna arrive at is that neither of these give us any critical values, which means we can still do the sign chart. I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. But now we just have one entire interval. So we can plug in any test point and I'm just gonna plug in a value of zero because zero is a very nice number to plug in and I'm just gonna plug that straight into my first derivative. So here, when I plug in zero, I get a positive value, which tells me it's gonna be increasing along that entire interval. So now let's go ahead and find the second derivative. When we do that, f double prime of x is equal to, we get two x e to the x squared plus, and now we gotta go ahead and use product rule on this second term. So I'll go ahead and set that up. Alrighty, so the derivative of 2x squared is going to be 4x, and the derivative of g is just going to be the same thing it was, so 2x e to the x squared. So here we go ahead and cross multiply and add them up, and so I get 4x e to the x squared plus 2x squared times 2x e to the x squared. So first what we can do when we simplify is we can combine those first two, so we get 6x e to the x squared. And then we're gonna go ahead and add, and that becomes four x cubed e to the x squared. Let's pull out that e to the x squared again, and with our leftovers, we have six x plus four x cubed. And we wanna go ahead and set this equal to zero. This again will give us two options, so e to the x squared equals zero, and remember, just like last time, there's no x values that we can plug in to make that zero. And then over here, we get this guy is equal to zero. 
So here we can go ahead and take out a 2x actually, and we're left with 3 plus 2x squared. Set this equal to 0. Again, we can split it into 2, and so 2x is equal to 0, which gives us a value of x equals 0. 3 plus 2x squared is also equal to 0. This one is not going to give us any x values because then we'll deal with imaginary numbers. We don't want to do that. So now we just have one inflection point and that's at x equals zero. So let's go ahead and set up the number line. Let's take our test points. So let's just go ahead and take negative one and positive one. I'll go ahead and plug those into the second derivative. Alrighty, as you can see, when I plugged in negative one, I got a negative value, which tells me my function will be concave down on that interval. And then when I plugged in a value of positive one, I got a positive value, which tells me on that interval, our function will be concave up. So let's go ahead and combine these two into one number line. So again, there's only going to be one value between all the inflection points and the critical points, and that's just going to be at x equals zero. So right there, I have a value of zero. So remember, when we were doing the intervals of increasing and decreasing, we found that it's gonna be increasing across the entire domain. Now, however, our concavity is gonna be different on either side because on the left side of zero, we have that as concave down, and on the right side of zero, we have that as concave up. So if we wanna go ahead and try to connect this, we have that we're concave down but increasing. And then we switch to concave up and we're still increasing. So our function is gonna look something like this. So before we graph it, let's go ahead and try to find the x and y intercepts. Because this will give us at least a couple points that we can plot. So first, let's go ahead and set y equal to zero to find the x intercepts. Again, this will give us two, so we have x is equal to zero and e to the x squared is equal to zero, and that never gives us a value. So we have a point at zero comma zero. Now let's go ahead and find the y-intercept, so I'll set x equal to 0, 0 times e to the 0 squared, and that's just equal to 0. So we just have one point we're going to plug in, and that's going to be at 0, 0. And now, just looking at our sign chart, I know our function is going to do something like this. So let's go ahead and compare it to the actual graph. That looks just about the same. I'm an artist, what can I say? So that is how we can graph functions using all of the information we've learned in this unit. So don't forget, we can also look for vertical and horizontal asymptotes. We didn't have to in this problem because we didn't have any issues, like no illegal values or stuff like that, but always pay attention to that. But otherwise, that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my videos. I have them linked below in the different playlists. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and comment other topics or problems you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.